Good evening, guys. Half past eight. You can set your watch by us. And I've got Stuart Marshall back again. And he's joined by Bath Time. We're talking about latest transfer gossip and all things Man United. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Welcome to the Man United Agenda. Um, we're back again, as you know, half past day every weeknight. Um, we're back again. I uh, hope you enjoyed the show yesterday. Um, I'm joined by Stuart Marshall. How are you doing, Stuart? Welcome back. I'm to good one day. You made your debut last week. It was a good debut, and you were partnered on the wing by um, Bath Time, who was feeding you all show. So, <laughs> better prepared this week. How are you feeling coming back? I'm good, mate. Looking forward to it. Thank you. And how's your day been? Tiring, mate. Hard at work, but there you go. I've got a beer on the table next to me. Okay. okay. <laughs> bath time. How you doing, man? Welcome back, bro. I haven't seen you for a while. I haven't been on with you for a while. We usually do our eye test show together, but there's been no games. Um, but we've got some action this weekend, eh? Yeah, it's been rubbish, isn't it? Like, I hate international football, which I probably shouldn't be saying on a football podcast, but I do. It's, it's, I, I'm not a fan of it. And um, as I was telling you off stage, I'm very concerned about rising energy prices and my football team not being able to train under the floodlights. Um, so if there are any like clubs or five aside players in chat who have found a way to get around this, like paying more money for the pitches, please let me know. It is a problem, isn't it? I mean, uh, when you think about the price of floodlights and uh, getting these games going and generators and that, it, yeah, it, it's going to hurt people's pocket. And all of us who love playing football, grassroots level um, and amateur football as well, this is going to be a bit of a bummer um, having these prices going up. Luckily, I play, well, like you say, game match, match day is going to be all right because it'll be light. We kick off at uh, half past 10. What time do you usually kick off half time? 11. 11, Okay. Um, yeah, so it's just the evening games. And as you can see, by four o'clock now, it's getting dark. So um, we need a bit of charity. Uh, Premier League, let's fill some money down to our level, please. Yeah. All mind. them aliens. Just turn up. <laughs> like I've seen, like you know, close encounters of the third time. Vroom. That big light on the pitch. And I can do set piece training. Like, <laughs> it'd be great. Think of that as the new plot of Independence Day. Me on near post corners. Oh, God. Here we go. Here we go. So, all right, all right. We're going to go straight in because you're going to distract me. Um, got a guy called Kim Ming Yang. Yay, or something. I spelled Ming wrong. Uh, forgive me. But he's from Napoli. I was trying to make it rhyme. So, King Ming J from Napoli. Um, yeah, so he's got a 50 million dollar or 50 million euro um, release fee. Um, I didn't know much about him. I've been doing my research today about this guy. Um, I know we've got some stats that to look at by the time we come to you in a minute, but I'm looking at his gameplay. Um, he's looks like he's intercepting the ball. Um, first of all, I just want to start before we go into him, I just want to say credit to Asian football because we're starting to see uh, like an influx of Asian players coming in, and um, people might have said, Oh, they're, they're not uh, built strong enough to sort of last the European game, but we've got some great players like Park, like um, uh who's the Japanese guy who's played for Man United. He, he come in, done well. We've got um, Song from South Korea playing for Tottenham. He's quality as well. And what really got me is reading Song's story about how much he practised and how um, his dad forced him to sort of, you know, almost like one of these Kung Fu films when they go to the training in the mm -hmm. mountains, a real hardcore kind of training mm -hmm. session. So credit to these guys. It's great to see these guys, guys coming through. So I'm quite impressed with this guy. I'm not sure how he would fit. I still need to look at him. But um, I'm going to start with you, Stuart. Um, what do you know about Kim you know, Ming Jae from Napoli? A Monday, until about two o'clock today, I knew absolutely nothing. <laughs> But obviously, yeah, I mean, he's, what is he, 25? He's got 44 caps for South Korea. Uh, he played for Fenerbahce, was that right, before Napoli? Yep. But I don't know much about him, mate, to be honest. Is he better than Harry Maguire? If he is, get him in. <laughs> <laughs> You're short and sweet. We're going to um, we're gonna go straight to bath time, because bath time, you've been looking at some data, and I think it's really, like, you've impressed me before in the past about comparing data and really sort of getting a good 
feel about what the players really like. So can you give us a little uh, summary about what you've been researching today about Kim Ming Jae, please? Yeah, well, like, look, I'm not gonna lie. I haven't heard of him. I haven't seen him play. I've just looked up data to try and get a picture of like what he does. And uh, first of all, um, he's a decent passer. Like that. That's the thing that really stands out is that um, he like he likes to play quite a lot of um, of long balls, and um, he's pretty accurate with them. So like a long ball is over thirty yards or something. It, it, it doesn't mean just hoofing it up the pitch. Um, and he's so he's he's very very good at progressive passes for a centre back. And I went a little bit further into the data, and um, and the, this this surprised me. Um, is that he's extremely effective at tackling dribblers, and we don't we don't tend to get a lot of dribbles <clears> through <throat> the centre in the Premier League. Um, so, part of me wonders if um, if Ten Hag might have an eye on Europe, like with mm. sort of like you know false nines and attacking midfielders in the pocket. Um, he's also extremely good at interceptions and um, tackles. Like and they, they, you know, he's not playing in a farmers league. The, Syria is the home of good defending. You, you, like if you any defender that comes from Syria, I'm I'm normally happy with. And I had a look at um, where he does most of his touches, and um, he has a surprisingly high amount in the middle third, which to me would suggest that he's comfortable in a high line. Um, he's not fantastic in the air. Like he's not bad, um, but he's not he's not great in the air. He's like he wins like um, sixty percent, which is like let's just call it one in three. So I think it's it's an interesting profile of um, player where um, he's a direct passer. Um, he likes getting the ball forward uh, and he's comfortable playing high up the pitch and is good at tackling dribblers, which should suggest to me. Um, that he's good on the transition. As I say, I haven't seen him. I haven't even bothered going on YouTube. I just look at the stats. And um, if we sign him, then I'll have a look at him and friendlies and things like that. But I think I'm, I'm, I, I think it sounds I think he sounds promising. I mean, I'd be interested in Monday in where you think we're looking for this type of defender. I was just about to ask the same sort of question. I thought that um, there were other areas of the pitch, but they're definitely not centre back that we needed. But um, I think just continue to ask me the media question. I'm going to throw this to you as well, Stuart. I think the reason we're looking is because the manager's not quite happy with the style of play that we've got at the moment. So this this shows about a centre back and about a goalkeeper as well, which suggests that these are two of the key areas where we should be improving. And as we do the eye test, as we know, bringing the ball out, uh, for example, being having that composure. Uh, having these progressive passing as well, being able to intercept the ball. Um, these are all good traits of uh, Ten Hag. I, uh, we can appreciate that from what we've seen so far. So I'm thinking Ten Hag is thinking long term and he's got a vision about what sort of player and the idea of the player that he's, he's looking for. So this guy's 25 years old. He's over six foot, unlike Martinez, you know. So I don't think there's uh, any, anything to do about him. But like Martinez, he seems to be good tactically uh, good technically on the ball and uh, i think these are sort of uh, um factors that we need that the manager wants for the team and as you look um what's what's go i'm looking back at ajax as well and he was playing timber in there and timber's just about six foot he's not mm. the most imposing mm. center back but what he does well is similar to what uh kim kim does well and what um martin does well technique good on the ball composure and interceptions and that kind of thing so uh, I did. You have to forgive me, Bath Time. The other day, I was cutting Nathan Aki, saying he was a bit small, didn't think he was outstanding, but he also uh, ticks those sort of boxes as well. And he's Dutch. Uh, so, Stuart, over to you. Why do you think we're looking for a centre back as well? Thanks I, for I, I, I wanted to answer that. We wanted to. Um, <laughs> no no worries, and I accept your apology. <laughs> Thank you. I, mean, <laughs> I honestly can't understand why we're looking at. I mean, I know it's only it's only a rumor, but do we really need another centre half? Until what happened, you know, we've still got Phil Jones, we've got Lindelof, obviously Maguire. I mean, we've got quite an abundance, really, in reserve as well. So, you know, I mean, is, is this hard truth that we get, we're we going for this fella or not? Well, I think the rumours start, don't they? I mean, we're coming up to the transfer window. We can't, he's uh, World Cup as well. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of more um, speculation about players 
and we're a club. As uh, w- w- the report I read, the Napoli guy, or sorry, the Italian reporter was saying, Man United had sort of clubs that would pay that sort of money for someone like that. They paid mm-hmm. 18 million for him, 18 million euros from, from Fenerbahce. They've already done this scouting work. They've done some really good scouting work, by the way, because if you look at some of their players they brought in this year, the guy from Georgia as well, and um, they, they're doing really well, the top of the league flying. So I think if they doubled their money, they'd be quite happy with that because they'd be thinking the Premier League or Man United will come in and, and sign someone like that who's playing really well. Um, Sorry, I'm on, Dave. Yeah. So, Am I right? He's only been at Napoli. Is this his second season, is it? First season. First season, yeah. So, what do you think about uh, bath time? What do you think about the, our current state of defenders? Do you think it's enough to see us through? And do you think um, it's yeah. a bit rushed that the manager would be looking to sort of, um, you know, change it up so soon? No. Like, I think that, like, um, so, like, right, in sort of, like, even at grassroots football, right, you don't necessarily look for a position to fill. Like you don't say, you know, we need we need a right back or whatever. You, you get someone in that does something that your team is missing. Um, and when I like, so one thing that I'm quite interested by is that Casemiro is a very different uh, profile of um, defensive midfielder to Frankie De Jong. We've made a huge investment in Casemiro. Like, is it a five year contract, sixty million? Like all of this. So what that suggests to me is that we've got a, we've actually completely got to redo our scouting structure around this signing um because frankie um sorry casemiro is not going to be a single pivot spraying balls out from the back and stuff however this guy is good playing high up the pitch and he's good at direct long uh, uh, direct passes so right. i think that this is probably the first stage of identifying how we're going to build out of the back with casemiro on the books for three or four years mm. so i agree with stewart it's a bit out of the blue it's a bit mad to think let's get a south korean who's played for six months in syria but i yeah. think the direction they're going they're going for and i'm a big fan of south korean so i respect anyone with a good work rate like park ji sung mm like love him uh, absolutely great what what i'd do for him in the team now like it'd be cool. oh, it'd be fantastic man mark pirlo out of out of games but um but anyway um reminiscing aside i think mm-hmm. that what this suggests is that um is that ten hag i personally believe might feel he's lumped with casemiro now and he's got to mm-hmm. work out ways um to get the ball out of the back and so we martinez the thing that's impressed me most is the like is the accuracy and the angle of his passing that left yeah. foot plays between the lines goes down the others imagine if we had someone on the right hand side doing the same because i don't know if anyone's seen the paul skulls uh, interview that's come out today with gary neville on the overlap um uh, he said that yeah, varan yeah. is not is a good center back but he's not a good footballer and that that's made me wonder where if this guy is a right-footed Martinez, and that's what we're looking for now. We got Casemiro, like Stuart. What what do you? Uh, am I being ridiculous, or is that no, not at all? <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. To be honest, I rate Rafael Varane, but yeah, I don't think he's a great footballer. I mean, he's a great defender. I mean, you know, what's he got? Four Champions League titles to his, under his belt. He's a, he's a fantastic footballer. I, I think he's a fantastic footballer, but. It's, you know, he's not going to dribble it out and spray 40, 50 yard balls, is he? Unlike no. Harry Maguire. <laughs> Very true, even if it was said in jest. Amonde, what do, what do, you, th- what do you think to my, my theory? Nonsense? No. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, Paul Scholes saying that, that's, uh, I'm not sure. I think Varane's a good player. I think he shepherds uh, defenders away. He doesn't sort of dive in. He's not reckless. A sort of guy that sort of strolls throughout the game, just does the does a really good job without sort of looking outstanding. It's only when you really sort of analyse this game, you realise what a good defender he is, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's just an injury uh, issue that worries me with him, uh, whether he's got can stand up to sort of a full season of premiership. Hopefully they can sort that problem out and he can prove Paul Scholes wrong because I'm I'm, I'm questioning Paul Scholes here. I do, I do think he's a good footballer. I think if you haven't been um, uh, from a young age, coming through the French uh, football system, then suddenly uh, you're, you're a, a giant at uh, Real Madrid partnering someone like uh, Sergio Ramos, Ramos um, learning the trade, training every day, that sort of high intensity, high level, 
I think that does make you a good footballer. And you're your first team player yeah. from a young yeah. age. That suggests to me he is a very good footballer. Maybe he's just not playing in a very good football inside at the moment. I, I think I, he's I just talking about the technical. Stuff. I think he was he's referring to the technical ab- ability of Rafa Varane because on the eye test Tuesdays at ten, um, we watched uh, Southampton and it was really really clear in the second half from on day. Do you remember that in order to break yeah. down the low block, Varane was tasked with carrying the ball. Um, yeah. like to the first line of attack and then passing to Delo. At yeah. no stage this season have we seen Varane breaking lines with passes. And I am a, I'm a, I like Varane when he's fit. I think he's a great, he's mm-hmm. a great defender. I mean, how can you not with him and Martinez? They're fantastic. Mm-hmm. But he does lack that ability to play through the lines, and he is a bit injury prone. So I think, I think it makes sense to have someone come in who can who can sort of play a, a more Martinez timber passing role like to have that or, or as an option because it's a squad game isn't it like it's it's like we, we need we're going to need players to break down low blocks hopefully as we become a possession team and I don't know if Varane's the man for that but this guy could that. be I think uh Stuart I'm gonna ask you because like um Box is saying Paul Scholes has questionable opinions and uh, Gavin Ward saying if Varane is an outstanding defender but can't pass for Toffee. I haven't really heard it before and I haven't really looked at that. What do you think about Varane? Is there any question marks from you? I, don't, I think it's just, just his injuries. I mean, he has been, you know, he's, he's been quite injury prone since he's been at United, hasn't he? But uh, I don't think there's no questions. If, if, you've got a, if you've got a fit Raphael Varane who's going who's gonna to only miss a few games a season then, yeah, he's it's, it's one of the best defenders in the world on his day, in my opinion. All right, should we go to the comments and see what the guys are saying in the comments here? Yes, please. Um, I want to say hi to Eddie, he's saying big up to the Man United agenda. Also hi to Bobby K. he's giving us a blue heart. Um, hopefully it's not Man City. And someone who is Man City is Blue uh, Moon Ian. And he's saying who? Mm. I think it's to do with Kim. Um, you might find out in the Champions League this season, uh, Ian. Uh, Mad Red, Neil was here as well. How you doing, man? I want to say hi to Brush. He was on the show with me. Fantastic performance last night from Brush. Um, how you doing? No popcorn today. Box is saying King Monji is a great defender. I thought he was going to say great leader. Um, uh, Gavin Ward saying never heard of him. I want to say hi to uh, Football United TV. Now, Football United TV, they do a lot of international uh, football cover a lot of the game uh, outside of the UK. So he's saying Asian football is growing fast. And something I want to talk about as well before we end this topic. Um, HG Game is saying King Ming Jae is apparently an Asian Van Dyke he read somewhere. So that's a big endorsement, isn't it? Uh, someone, up, then. someone was saying that Park was South Korean because they thought I meant Park. I was talking about Kualja, who played for, is it Kuala, from Borussia Dortmund? When I said the midfielder came to Man United, Kuala. Kagawa. That's the one. Shinji Kagawa. 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 He was uh, decent. Um, yeah, he was all right, wasn't he? Just didn't get enough time, though. Boxer saying he had taken mm. the Napoli side, beat AC Milan at San Siro last week. So they're really mm. on, a, on a high at the moment. Um, and Box is also saying King Ming Jae passed the eye test for him. So, like myself, I've been watching him uh, and thinking, yeah, he, he looks a decent player. All the attributes that uh, Bath Time said uh, he's got from stats, you can see it. It's, it's sort of like visual as well. Uh, HG Game is saying King Meng Jae in Maguire out, which is, seems to be the trend here at the moment. <laughs> and uh, just coming to a couple of people here. Box is saying we need quality in all positions. Getting a new centre back is vital. So I'm really surprised with this. Um, mm. Brand is different gravy, says Mad Red Neil. So we shouldn't, maybe we shouldn't be criticising him. And finally, Box is saying at times Rand has the same running style. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's Neil. right there. <laughs> um, right there, Box. Yeah, just to end on that, just uh, obviously we, we don't know much about this guy. Uh, if you tune into Man United Agenda, we will do cover players in more depth when we've got more time. We will sort of go back into him if it becomes sort of like a, a, a realistic signing. But I just want to talk about like Asian football and um, the rise of Asian football. We've seen African football. Um, they've got to quarterfinals, semifinals, the World Cup. Uh, Asian football's got a lot of money pumped into it. You see the Chinese League and the players. Um, just to come to you, Stuart, what do you think... Do you think it's like a slow burner here? Because I remember in the 1966 World Cup, uh, North Korea... Oh, yeah, yeah. It's North Korea. Been, it's That's it. Yeah. And, um, I mean, you think when, it was, when, when, when was the World Cup in Seoul? Was it 2004? Yes. Was it? it was somewhat, uh, Seoul it was and 2002, Japan. I think. 2002. Yeah, and didn't, didn't, 
well. Didn't South Korea get to the semi-finals then? Or was it the quarters? Mm-hmm. They beat the semis. Yeah. Um, yeah, but then since then they've sort of like faded out, haven't they? But are they the champions of Asia? Do they tend to win everything? Is, it, is what about yeah. Chinese people um, internationally anyway? Well, going back to ch- Chinese, Grand Passat when Lineker in the days of Gary Lineker was it Nagoya Grand Passat, wasn't it? Yeah, oh Japan, sorry, yeah. Japan, yeah. Bath time, don't know much about Chinese Asia. football. Yeah, a lot of bath time, bath time, a lot of money in Asia. Do you think um, we're going to see the rise of Asian football and players? Because you've seen a lot of good players turn up in Europe now. I mean, I, I have no position to answer that question, which I don't think is very helpful. But look, football, football is the people's game. And it's it's going to be popular like like everywhere, and you're going to get like bad players and good players coming out of like um of of, of Asia, and I'd 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 love to see like um more countries produce better players and raise the standards, uh, but I I don't really think that we're going to see a, an Asian team surprise us uh, in the World Cup. But like you know, credit credit to them. It's the people's game, and I believe that football is a a force that can that can change uh, countries. And I really hope that like in places like China and and other places that football can really help people feel connected with their culture and the people around them. So I'm for football, uh, not just in Asia but everywhere. Sorry, quickly. Isn't isn't Fellaini in China, isn't he? I can't recall where he is now. Sure, he is. He's probably part of the wall, just lying down, (laughs) (laughs) acting as a tree. Yeah, like a tree. I just want to uh, just want to say also like Japan, they're very good imitators. I mean, they do studio one reggae music like to the T. They do karaoke uh, really well. They mm-hmm. like to impersonate things. And uh, if you look at athletics as well, they had um, the Chinese had a great sprinter who got around nine point eight three recently, and they really pushed for it. To, so, so if they get behind people, they can really like the snooker. Snooker is a massive sport out there, and their 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 champion snooker player is probably the most big biggest sports sporting <clears throat> personality over there as well so if they imagine they get a footballer like song uh, or they keep producing players like that it'd be great for that sort of area you know but uh boxer saying iran iran is probably one of the best asian sides at the moment uh wouldn't mind Maguire being fifth choice defender says hd gamer Talk about <laughs> asian devon says the asian countries just aren't the same at that level unfortunately they don't they have the odd pop star pop up but uh, otherwise it's just down to their genes um mm. China has underdeveloped massively. They had Lippi Cannavaro as managers in recent times, says Box. Uh, Devon saying uh, Africa is miles ahead. Uh, Box saying, I think Aram approached from Group B, England's group. Um, Carlos Quiros, is he managing them? I didn't know that. Um, and we're seeing the rise of Canada as well, which is a joy to watch for sure. Mm-hmm. Japan will give Germany, Spain a run for the money in Group B in one of the groups, says uh, Box. And finally, H. The Game is saying, Need some good Irish players to come through the cough cough for another Roy Keane. Uh, Rich Sports, how you doing? He's asking if he's any good. You'll have to go back and check uh, what we said about him. But I think it's a thumbs up from me. Um, thumbs up from you for Kim, Stuart. I know nothing about him, but... Yeah. <laughs> and bath time, you can't see your thumbs, but what would you say? Yeah, t- uh, I've never seen him play. Mm. Two thumbs up. Get him in. Sign him okay. up. Yeah. 21 is Get loading. All right, guys, there's 15 in the, in the chat. Um, let's give us a like button, press the like button if you don't mind. Next subject we're going to talk about is a subject that we go over and over again. Um, it's really sort of um, an issue. And I'm glad, really glad that I've got uh, bar time on the show Mm-mm. because it's Jan Oblek um, and a switch with De Gea. And I'm really surprised because I, De- Jan Oblek, he's a Slovenian. Uh, he's come from Benfica in 2014, ended up at Atletico Madrid one of the most uh, tightest teams as we experienced last year, one of the tightest teams when it comes to sort of giving away goals or giving a sniff away uh, because they're manager and they've been really great. They've got to the Champions League final over the last seven, eight, nine years and he's been part of it, a really good keeper and his stock has gone up uh, time after time. So I wanted to ask a few questions about what sort of keeper we need, why we would be linked with this guy and uh, what do we know about him. So I'm going to start with you, Stuart. Uh, Jan Oblek, the Slovenian mm. keeper from Atletico Madrid. When you hear a news that it might be a switch with De Gea, um, how do you feel about that? I wouldn't. I mean, you know, we've all got our own opinions, but I, I, I love, I still love David De Gea. Yeah, I know he's got, you know, especially Brentford. He's, 
every keeper makes mistakes, but I wouldn't I wouldn't get rid of De Gea. I mean, if they're talking, they're going to trigger his contract in January, is that right? And apparently he's gone to Ten Hag, he wants answers, answers about his contract, but I'll keep him 100%. I wouldn't swap him for Oblak. I mean, what's Oblak? Is he 29? 20, yeah, that's right. He's only 29. De Gea's only 31, but is he better than De Gea? Well, that's what we want to it's find a tough out. One. Yeah. It's a tough one. Bath time, over to I'll, you. I'll so, keep the higher. You'll keep, okay. So, bath time. I'll keep okay, it. I mean, there's been issues, isn't it, about distribution and what the manager wants from a modern goalkeeper. Um, do you agree that the, the Gea's position is under threat? And what do we need? I mean, as uh, Jan Oblak, does he like tick the boxes? Um, for me... Oblak is more of a sideways move. Like my um, uh, my cousins are all Letty fans, <clears> and um, I, uh, you know, in keeping with my um, huge work ethic for when I come on the United agenda, I, I even emailed <laughs> one of them today to ask them what they thought about Oblak, and um, yeah. uh, I got a very long paragraph in like completely indecipherable Spanish to be honest but the the gist of it is is that um, they think that he's had a massive decline over the last three or four years and they re they really want to move him out it's very similar to De Gea they think he's overpaid um, they think he's holding the team back because um, with the demise of Barcelona or you know Barcelona haven't been very good for two or three seasons a lot of Leti fans thought that they should be taken over um, and that they haven't really. And a lot of that has been put down to the fact that you can only really play one way with Oblak, which is a, a low block where they don't really pass it out. And this, to me, is just basically the same as um, as De Gea. Like, um, I, you know, I respect that Stuart likes De Gea. Personally, he would probably be the first footballer I'd put on a rocket and shoot to the moon <laughs> if, I, if I had the opportunity. I'm like... I'm I, I'm a hater number one for De Gea. He annoys me too much. But what? more than Maguire? Yes, far more than Maguire. <laughs> um, much, much more than Maguire. And also the amount of fuel it would take to get that head into geosynchronatic orbit. <laughs> it's not enough. <laughs> like, um, but like, I mean, it's great. De Gea, he's got Mohican now. He's like, you know, he's got f discovering some sort of like midlife crisis Viking age that he's going through. But he's got, he, he, if we want to progress to a, to a passing possession based team, we can't do it with De Gea. Like, um, what we can get like halfway there or something like that, but we'll never be the finished article with De Gea and the team. And it's it's not just De Gea. There's there's other players as well that there's question marks over. But yeah. because most of our problems come from building out with the back, which uh, on the eye test we've highlighted this many times, the difference between our keeper and other keepers. Um, yeah. like with with a, with a team where we're trying to control the ball. Shot stopping becomes less important. Distribution mm. becomes vitally important. 100%. And I, yeah, yeah. I, I just think that this is this is just the normal nonsense that we get from Spain. Um, I don't think that Ten Hag wants. It's it's just such a sideways step. Like he mm. he's not a passing goalkeeper. I, I looked at his stats, but um, he kicks the ball like over forty yards ninety percent of the time, and we don't need that. At Manchester United, like we can, we can put any of our players on goal kicks and see who can boot it the furthest and have pretty much the same, the, the, you know, the same effects. So I, I think that this is a nonsense story, and I, I mean, would I'd like a new goalkeeper? I'd take pretty much anyone, but like Oblak would be right down Not at the Dubravka. Dubravka, yeah, like <laughs> well. The one thing that's interesting about Dubravka is um, everyone said that he was like a low block goalkeeper that, you know, all this kind of stuff. So I went and looked up um, on Wikipedia like about him and the interview, which I actually checked in the footnotes to make sure it was a real interview. It's with The Guardian is that um, after two weeks at Newcastle, they were playing him in training in midfield and were considering like converting him to an outfield. Wow. Get him in wow. nets. Wow. I am completely Amazing. stunned why he hasn't played against um, Sheriff. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. he's a very good keeper, Bath Time. Very good keeper. Yeah, have you seen him? Yeah, he's a very he's a very good keeper. 
Better than, yeah, better than some out there. I'd, I'd, I'd hope so. He's distributing the ball. This is what I've heard he's good at. Uh, yeah, he's good. He's very yeah, good he's distribution. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he's yeah. got very, very good distribution of the ball, uh, Amondi. But, That's you know, why mean, get him? Sorry, why is he not playing? Exactly. Why did he, like you said, Bath time, why didn't he play against Sherry? I know we've got Villa in the League Cup coming up. If he doesn't start that, then I don't know what's going on. Strange. Uh, is, it, is it really vital to have like two, like we had Tom Heaton there, and obviously he's. Oh, Heaton, yeah. But I don't, I don't think, I, don't, I understand why he would get a look in. But to bring in another keeper, I thought that mm. was to suggest to put uh, De Gea under pressure. But it seems like De Gea is clear of De Brack, but based on not playing against Sheriff, what Bath mm. I made a point about. So it'd be interesting to see what happens with that. But I can I just say something, just to clarify about all this talk. I've always thought All Black was a good, one of the best rated uh, goalkeepers. Just from his uh, mm. status, he's one of the best rated goalkeepers in the league. But... I'm st- I've, I'm swung a little bit now because I realise maybe he hasn't got the good stats. So I'm going to come to a few comments here. Um, Gavin Ward said no, his attributes are exactly the same as De Gea, which suggests he's not a, a distributing keeper. Uh, Gavin Ward also said we've been linked to him to allow De Gea to go back home to see out his career. Dev Devon says I'd keep De Gea to be honest. Uh, Box is saying De Gea, it's time to go. Time for a new player to suit us. Time to redress the wage situation as well. Because Stuart, how much is De Gea on? Um, is he on three? Is he on three and a half hundred a week or something? Is he? Or is it two hundred eighty? Something like that. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's crazy. And uh, Gavin's oh, saying he can't pass out from the back. Great shot stopper, but can't pass as a uh, yeah. time was highlighting. Um, Gavin suggested we go for Lafont in France. Lafont. I don't really know who that is. Uh, Box is saying we need a new young goalkeeper on about one hundred fifty grand a week. Oh. Wasn't that what Henderson was on? Uh, we'll say hi to Emma as well. Yeah. She said, let's just use Debraka and then train up the academy keeper to fit Ten Hag. And she also said, Debraka has been injured most of the time since he's come. That's probably why he didn't play against Sharif. And mm-hmm. uh, Rich Sports is saying, we should at least see how he does. Um, talking about Debraka, I, I believe. So, um, yeah, it's interesting here. We talk about Pope as well. We um, Sorry, he was unlucky to lose his place to Pope. Um, Pope had a bit of a stinker against Germany, didn't he? He should have claimed that ball. Uh, but people rate him as well as a good goalkeeper. Um, just in the Premiership, quickly before, because we are just talking goalkeepers. Bath time and uh, Stuart. What sort of goalkeeper that you see playing regular? Do you fit think fits the the bill, which we ideal for Man United? To, to be honest, uh, at the moment, I mean, no one. I'm I'm happy with the hire. I know everyone's got their own opinions, but I mean, you look at the top keepers. You've got uh, Ellison for Liverpool. I, I don't rate him anymore. You've got. Hugo Lloris, again, he's, he's prone to errors. Uh, I see. I think we were linked with Pickford the other day somewhere. I think in some tabloid, I saw that. Would you take Pickford yeah. over the hair? Uh, I heard that the other day. Uh, funny you should say that. Yeah, I did hear that we were interested, but no, the answer's no for me. No, me either. I'm on this. Bath time, you get any suggestions that you've seen from the Premiership or outside the Premiership? Do you think this is a goalkeeper that ticks all the boxes? That's a no from bath time. Uh, Box is saying here, oh, back, uh, from 2015 to 2020, was arguably the best keeper in the world. Box and um, people in the comments, is it because Atletico Madrid is such a defensive unit that they the goalkeeper yeah. looks good because of the way they play? If he played somewhere else, would he be more exposed maybe because of the, the Diego Simeone? I'm not sure about that. And um, Gavin Ward saying, we need a carbon copy of Edison, who we're going to come up against this week. Emma's saying we are not rushing players back from injury, so I'd be surprised if he's going to be a little longer out with the injury as well. And um, get us a Brazilian goalkeeper, says HD Gamer. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys, um, that's a wrap. I'm going to go to any other business. And this is the part of the show where there's anything else you want to discuss, uh, anything you heard on the grapevine. Um, we're going to start with you, Stuart. Have you heard anything on the grapevine you want to talk about? Um, and I mean, we're not doing a preview for Man City, but maybe you can just have a little. Um, Give us a little feeling about, how, give a little suggestion about how you're feeling about coming into that game as well. Well, Sunday. Yeah. I'm actually feeling quite, quite, quite comfortable at the moment. I mean, it's going to get a bit more nervy come uh, two o'clock Sunday, but I've got a feeling we we we, we'll, we can get a result there. I'm not saying win. Uh, I'll, I'll be happy with a score draw. I'll take that right now, Monday. Okay. 
I, I, I'll be happy with a draw as well. And I think don't think Pep's after seeing us against Liverpool and um, Arsenal, I think he will be taking us seriously. And I think at this stage he can afford to get a draw against us, and that would be a good result for everyone uh, round. So I, I do think with such build up to the game, it will be interesting to see um, how they play against us, and if we can exploit them like we have Liverpool and um, Arsenal in recent times. I believe, times. I, I believe John Stones is out Sunday, isn't he? Wow, well, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rashford and Martial injured, though, they're saying here. So, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, be doing a, we'll be doing a show tomorrow night about the, the preview for the show. But, yeah, it's a big week, isn't it, for football when we've got a big, big match? Missed it so much, I'm on, dude. I'm just being so oh, bored. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Stuart, you go to home game. So, when's the next home game you're going to? I think it's, uh, is it Newcastle on the 16th of October, I believe? Okay, brilliant. So maybe you can give us a little run a vlog or something about your adventures because obviously you travel up from uh, London all the way up to uh, yeah. Manchester. Essex and Monday. Oh, sorry, Essex. Yeah, of course. <laughs> not, not London, Essex. I want to say hi to Jamie Football Chats. How you doing, man? Big up for tuning in. Also to Abdullah. Uh, big up, man. He said no Marshall or Rashford, so he's a bit concerned about that too. Um, we're going to sign out now, but guys, make sure you tune in tomorrow to the Man United Agenda. We'll be going again. Bath time's gone mute on us, so... Uh, we're I haven't from... gone mute. Oh! Oh, he's back. You just, hey. you just didn't listen to me when I started talking about what goalkeeper I wanted. Oh, forgive me. I thought you, you'd gone missing. Well, Bath no, you're gone. Oh, yeah, like, I, 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 I want... It, I want um, there's three. One you're not going to like, which is the Leeds okay. goalkeeper, like Meisler right. or whatever he's yeah. called. I like him. I like him. Um, but Raya and Sanchez in particular. Uh, Sanchez at Brighton um, and Raya at um, Brentford, I would go for. Oh, because both these guys ahead of the game in um, pecking order for Spain as well. Bro, a duck is ahead of De Gea for Spain. He's not, he's not, <laughs> he's not playing for Spain. He's not playing for Spain again. Like, um, and, um, unless there's an just operation. Bath time, what's the reason, just uh, why these players are suit more suitable? Uh, because uh, because they're so comfortable with the ball at their feet and uh, collecting crosses, um, it means that you can uh, you can play out from the back using uh, just two centre halves uh, to make the three. And if you um, if you have De Gea, you need uh, you need to take a player out of midfield to put him next to the centre halves in order to play out. So we're a man down, and it's it's vi it's vitally important to to have more men in the like like playing football so sure. like a, a passing goalkeeper allows you to do much much more get up the pitch quicker be safer and um you know all these guys might have clangers in them um they might not be as secure at shot stopping from day but they will let you score more goals and that's and they'll let you control the game more and that's the problem with with that's one of the problems with De Gea. um so uh, there's some dogs agreeing with me Brilliant, lads. Is that yours or mine, Amondi? Uh, I think they're mine. Um, yeah. Calm down. Calm down. It's only we don't do the show. Um, yeah, I, I do think, you made a great point uh, when, when we played against uh, Brighton about Sanchez's kicking when we did the watch, the, not the watch long, the eye test. And you really highlighted how his kicking was really effective and how he was able to ping the ball into areas where it put us under pressure. So, yeah, he is. And, and that free, what, I forget the, what you call it, uh, bath time. But when you have a third man in defence, which is the goalkeeper, and giving the extra man uh, higher on the pitch, that does cause a lot of problems as well, as we saw Ramsdale do. So, yeah, that's a good shout. I just want to go through and find a few comments um, before we sign out. Boxers agreeing with you. So it's the Leeds keeper, Rea and Sanchez, all good shouts. He agrees. Cracking show, lad, says Mad Red Nil. Big up to Mad Red Nil. Bridging of uh, our man, uh, Stuart. Yep. Uh, Gavin Ward saying Sanchez Defo. Defo, he likes that. And hit the like button and subscribe, guys, if you don't mind. Emma's uh, K saying, so you can actually play 4 3, three 4 4. <laughs> is that a formation? 4 4 2 or 4 4 4 4 4 3. That's no formation. But I mean, uh, okay. We, we, we get you, Emma. But anyway. Any last words, guys? Because we're going to sign out now. Bath time, quickly. Are you looking forward to the game? Because you're not on no. the preview show. Don't you? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm always terrified, like, up until the night before, like, about what's going to happen. And at the moment, I'm in peak fear. I can just see that shiny head of Guardiola bubbling <laughs> with, like, ways to get through our defence. Like, and... <laughs> 
I'm, 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 I'm absolutely terrified. But when it gets to Friday night, or sorry, Saturday night, I'll be drunk and I'll be ready for it. And hopefully, so will our lads. Let's is, go, is it, WKTs. Is it, um, is it a tactical battle, like high class, high tech tactical battle between two managers here? Yeah, I, th- uh, I, I think it will be. I think it's going to be fascinating because I don't. Th- even though it's a derby, I think after about ten or fifteen minutes, it's going to calm down, and it's going to be a, a bit of a chess match that might disappoint some people. I mean, we have like the the wild card of God knows what McTominay is going to do to that midfield because he he will keep kicking people until he gets a yellow. Like, and God bless he's gonna him. Do, he's going to do a Roy Keane on Haaland. Uh, oh god! Yeah, yeah I saw a about that. Yeah, <laughs> um, but I, th- I think it's I, th- I, th- I, like I don't think we're going to win. Um, I don't think that we're going to. I, th- I think it's probably going to be a one all or a nil nil. But if it is a one all, yeah, nil nil. I'd love to see us go behind, and then come back. That's something this team under under uh, Ten Hag hasn't done yet, yeah, so, and I yeah. would like. Because uh, it's not to me, it's not an important game. Like, um, it's not going to show. If we're not going to win the league. It's not going to get us. It, it's not even a barometer of how close we are to the league. It's about sort of getting. Like, it's about building towards something. And so, uh, j- as long as we have a good performance and like the team believe in what they're doing, I'll I'll be pretty happy. Beautiful. Uh, just finally, a couple more comments here. Gavin says the Baldy Derby. Between the two managers, leave us baldies alone. MK saying that Monday doesn't get my joke. The Chelsea owner suggested a four-four-three to uh, formation to turn the show. So mm-hmm. obviously, uh, an American guy. Yeah, I get it now. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm going to be sitting down. I've got myself prepared already. Big screen at home, taking in the game in all its glory. Um, Stuart, how are you watching the game? I was going to say round yours on Monday. Yeah, always welcome. I've got a big sofa. And bring your dog along as well. At bath time, where, are you, where are you? I know you're going out Saturday night, but where will you be watching the game? In the bath, mate. Okay. In the bath. That's it. Uh, Monday. Every game is I've got one thing. I've got one thing left to say. Glazers yeah. out. Don't Get say out. We can read it. We can read it. <laughs> All right, on that note from Stuart, we're out. Stuart, thanks again for joining us. You're becoming a bit of a regular here, and we like it. And bath time is a regular. Cheers, and we boys. love it. We love you, bath time. So big up, guys. Thanks for everyone in the comments, and we're signing out. Good night. <laughs>